Psychopaths like to write their victims off as crazy. This tactic keeps their flying monkeys from exercising their own powers of discretion and examining facts objectively. This ploy serves to perpetuate evil and injustice by killing the messenger as the scapegoated truth-tellers are thrown under the bus. This video is meant to be a guide to provide a context for anyone struggling with a he said, she said, or a similar situation who wants to be on the right side of an issue and wants to do the right thing in the face of conflicting evidence or sometimes little or maybe even no evidence at all. So let's discuss what a traumatized person looks like. Now the psychopath's victim is most likely traumatized rather than crazy, especially when we consider the manner in which the psychopath uses the term crazy as a pejorative, as hate speech. The psychopath, or if you prefer, narcissist, is telling you to disregard everything the truth teller is saying because the truth teller is not in their right mind, because the truth teller has no idea what they're talking about, because the truth teller is living in some sort of dream world completely detached from reality, and whatever facts they have to contribute are completely unreliable, not even meeting the minimum standard for consideration, as in, don't listen to that person, that person is crazy. So is this person crazy or merely traumatized? Now, everyone has issues, things that push their buttons, and this is part of being human. But a traumatized person will react with what looks like an irrational display of emotions when triggered. And that's because of the traumatic emotional injury they carry around inside. So let's look at the big picture. What is the truth teller's basic nature? Because when someone is crazy, you can see that from a mile away. Is the truth teller empathic or self-centered? How well do they manage the mundane world? Are they a kind, loyal, caring friend? Because when someone has their shit together and then appears suddenly to snap, that doesn't make them crazy. It means that they're traumatized and something has triggered them. Now, the trigger to you may seem inappropriate to the size of their reaction. The truth teller may seem completely irrational and may appear to be having a tantrum like a two-year-old. But there's always an explanation under the surface. The traumatized person has seen great darkness. And the traumatized person has experienced tremendous pain. The traumatized person has suffered real abuse, like abandonment, betrayal, physical or emotional abuse, or sexual exploitation. And if the trauma remains unresolved because the truth teller hasn't been heard or hasn't been taken seriously, and there's no justice and no closure, the frustration and the hopelessness will exacerbate the traumatic outbursts and make them appear even more irrational because a heart can only take so much pain. And yes, these things are icky. The dark side of human nature is deplorable. But just because you're uncomfortable with the material, that in itself doesn't make the truth teller a bad person to be shunned. You need to look at the context of the whole person. What are they trying to do with their life? What are they trying to make of their life? Consider this before you write off what they have to say. And what is the truth teller trying to say to you? 
Are they trying to warn you about something or someone? And what do they have to gain from taking this stance? What is it they really want? Has anyone asked the truth teller, what is it about the situation that's making you so upset? What are the facts in the situation? And who among you can evaluate them? Is there anyone else qualified to offer another perspective? And by qualified, I mean someone else who knows all the parties involved as well or better than the truth teller. Because there's nothing more frustrating than someone three layers removed from everyone involved going around repeating that nothing happened and the truth teller is crazy when they've never even met half the people involved and they're merely parroting what they've heard through the grapevine. If the truth teller's emotion is making you uncomfortable, then showing some empathy would help. If any part of you cares about the truth teller, if you've ever appreciated anything about their friendship, take the time to understand what they're trying to say, because there will be, at the very least, a kernel of truth there. And trying to convince them that they're wrong when you're not sufficiently qualified to speak to their truth will destroy whatever bond you had and drive away a true friend who cared enough about you to tell the truth. Now, let's look at the person who calls a traumatized person crazy. What is that person's character? What does that person stand to gain? More control? Is this a person you really trust with that much power? And is this a person that you really want making your decisions for you? Be forewarned that after you side with the kind of person who would devalue and disregard a traumatized person as crazy, the traumatized person will eventually remove themselves from the picture. You have effectively chosen a narcissist or a psychopath over a person with a heart and soul and feelings. Someone who dared to speak truth to power. Someone who would have spoken up for you. Understanding this dynamic is important because humans are social animals with a herd mentality. The narcissists and psychopaths of the world know this and exploit this. And people are lazy and they fall for it time and time again. The narcissists have charisma and they like being in control. Some are politicians and rule the world. Some control their little social cliques, while others, their reach only extends as far as their family tree. But all psychopaths rule with a cold and iron fist. So don't think for a second that by throwing the truth teller under the bus that you're going to be safe, that you're so special that you'll never fall out of favor. Know that you could always be the next one to go. And with every injustice you go along with, just to get along, you're losing a little bit of your own humanity. Now this is a way to examine and ingest your own moral compass. Because a better and more just world starts with you, and the choices you make, and the company you keep. So I hope this video serves to help others understand what a traumatized person looks like. These people are not victims, they're survivors. And when you see one, have some compassion and consider what it is they have to say. Thanks for listening. This is After Arts, out.